Fallout New Vegas is an iconic game, with the New Vegas Strip being one of the most memorable areas in any of the games I've played. I spent countless hours in the casinos losing until I realised my luck stat was terrible, admiring the detail in the area, and unlocking every secret I could find, but I'd always wanted one extra feature to elevate the New Vegas experience. That feature is the ability to open and run your own casino. As the courier, you can influence the course of the game and take over the Lucky 38, so why can we not enjoy the benefits of that? Well, it just so happens I found a couple of mods to fix this issue. The New Bison Steve Hotel and Run the Lucky 38. Both of these mods let me redevelop these rundown casinos and turn them into profitable businesses which breathe brand new life into some neglected areas. And who better to take on the challenge than the hero of Nipton, Sheriff Lonesome Roads. After recently taking Nipton from a crumbling ruin and turn it into a secure town and popular rest stop, Rhodes hears about another town that has fallen on hard times. The resort town of Prim, which has fallen under control of recently escaped convicts. And so, on day one, Rhodes sets off to Prim to liberate the town. Warned by an NCR guard of the danger, he heads inside and gets attacked by Dust Brahmin and convicts, quickly dispatching them. With more danger inside the Bison Steve Hotel, Rhodes clears the hallways and fights a tough group of enemies in the main hall, just narrowly avoiding being turned into a barbecue and finishing the convict group's leader. With the hotel cleared of enemies, the captive Deputy Beagle is rescued and when safely outside, mentions the old sheriff was killed. But Rhodes can't be in two towns at once, so it's time to get some outside help. Day 2, and after recovering from the fight, hears about a sheriff who was wrongly locked up in the local NCR prison so it's time to break into the prison and free the sheriff from the convicts who are now running it. Arriving at the prison, Rhodes takes out a few guards on the outside before a brutal shootout in the prison cafeteria, and thanks to his amazing luck, manages to avoid injury and clears the room. With the room cleared, we can finally speak to Sheriff Myers, who agrees to take on the prim job if we can clear his name with the NCR. And after a long walk, we arrive at the NCR base at the Mojave Outpost and have a meeting with Major Knight, who doesn't take much convincing that a new sheriff in Prim would help stabilise the region and pardons Myers of his crimes. With that job done, we give the good news to Sheriff Myers and Prim is safer, and Rhodes is free to get on with the rebuilding work. Day 3, and after investigating around town, we find a descendant of the owners of the Bison Steve Hotel, and agree to help with the restoration work with the promise of becoming a co-owner. The first step is retrieving some blueprints locked away in a safe, with the blueprints collected, there's a clear plan on how to turn this old hotel into a state-of-the-art wasteland casino. The first step is to get the lights fixed, and it just so happens there's an old order for lights which was never delivered, so it's time to prepare for a trip to the New Vegas Strip to collect. And while on the long journey to the Strip, now is a great time to like and subscribe, which massively helps the channel out. And I'm happy to announce the launch of the Vale Plays Games Discord, where you can chat about all things Bethesda with me and this amazing community. And finally, you can now become a member of the Vale Plays Games channel, which comes with a few perks. Some fun custom badges for members which show up when you comment, you'll get producer credits on each of my videos, VIP Discord access, and for members with a PC, you'll get access to the saves I use in videos, so you can start your own adventure, or pick up where I left off. Day 4, and we arrive at New Vegas to pay a visit to the Gamora Casino, and a man named Nevada Slim, who never bothered sent them the lights pre-ordered. This dodgy looking fellow tries to double the order price, but with some shrewd bartering we secure the lights for 750 caps. Day 5, and after arriving back in Prim, we help clear up the damage and dirt in the Bison Steve, installing some makeshift lighting in the entrance, and knock down a wall to open a huge room containing a fountain, which is just the place for a casino to be opened. Day 6, and with the lights ordered, we still need furniture for the casino. A mysterious middleman offers us some furniture from Vault 3. There is a catch though, it's infested with fiends, and he wants a briefcase in the vault as payment. So, we head over to the vault entrance and clear out a few fiends, who are a bit too wasted to hit me, and head inside of the well-hidden vault. Luckily, the fiends inside aren't too clever, and I convince them I'm a courier delivering some Jet and Psycho, which let me walk straight past to the boss's office with no trouble at all, and for a few psychos, he's more than happy to let me take the briefcase. I quickly leave before they catch on to my tricks, and head back to Prim. Day 7, and finally arriving back in town, I hand over the case asking no questions, worth it for some custom furniture, and the lights we ordered are finally delivered, so spend the day installing some fancy wall and ceiling lights. And even a custom chandelier which will be the centrepiece of the new casino room. Day 8, and with nothing to do until the furniture arrives, we need to address the issue that our casino has no kitchen. 
so head out to the location of an old tool shop near New Vegas, which unfortunately is inhabited by some robo brains, so take them out for scrap parts. And after some searching, find kitchen grills which can be repurposed into a cooking station. Just ignore the green water they've been sitting in. Day 9, and after returning to Prim with the kitchen grills, we spend the day unpacking the furniture delivery, adding in comfortable seating in the hotel's main entrance, setting up a large restaurant with custom vault seating which just needs a kitchen to open, and adding in a bar area and extra seating in the large soon-to-be casino room. And it wouldn't be much of a hotel casino without a reception area. Day 10, and the casino is nearly ready for opening, but we find out the casino's custom chips were never delivered. After some digging, it turns out the shipment was hijacked by some ghouls. So, we head to the last known location outside of town, and spot a ghoul in the distance. Following it to its lair, which is infested with the now feral ghouls who stowed the shipment. A few kills and some radiation later, we find an old shack, with a killer robot and a long dead ghoul doctor, who just so happens to have stored away the custom chips we need, so we take them and get on our way. Day 11, and after sleeping off the radiation, we get to work on the restaurant kitchen, installing the newly refurbished grills which we're hoping won't irradiate every customer who eats here, and even manage to fit two clean water sinks which use filtered rainwater collected from the roof. Day 12, and Rhodes thinks the casino needs custom artwork and signage to help it compete with New Vegas, so heads over to the Strip to speak with a well-known artist in the area. The problem is, he's struggling for inspiration and is contracted to stay on the Strip, so we've got to take some pictures to help his imagination. Days 13 and 14 are spent travelling around various New Vegas landmarks to help our new artist friend. Starting at home with a picture of Bison Steve's current sign, followed by the Novak Dinosaur Thermometer, the Camp McCarran Neon Monstrosity, the most unappetising bottle of Sunset Sarsaparilla you're ever likely to see, and finally the Helios 1 sign. Day 15 and we return to Michelangelo with the inspirational pictures, and he gets to work on our new artwork. We then head back to Prim and spend the rest of the day setting up the casino, with all of the usual games for customers to enjoy, as well as a bar which definitely won't encourage them to spend more caps. After setting up a lot of the town with new jobs, it's time for a small party, getting a bit too drunk at the bar. Day 16, and after drinking the last of the town's drink supply, we need to find a regular supplier, as well as some fresh food, and it just so happens that our new rich friends outside of New Vegas can help. We cut a deal for some of the profits to be shared for regular protected caravans to be set up to the area, hoping to stimulate the economy. Day 17, and after returning to Prim, the art has arrived. The outside gets some imported trees as well as lights to show the area isn't deserted, but inside is where it shines. Artwork adorning every wall to up the class, plants to add a bit more life into the room, the steakhouse gets its own custom sign, and the restaurant begins serving standout food in the wasteland. The casino is officially dubbed the Lucky Casino, but the casino room is where it shines with huge art pieces, full-size palm trees, and a custom fountain area which really helps make the casino stand out. Day 18, and needing a place to rest and work, a basement area is renovated into a living space with a comfortable sleeping area, a kitchen to prepare some quick meals, and a workshop area so building projects can take place away from guests, and I'm even treated to a new gun from our co-owner Steve. Day 19, and with the casino proving popular, we set up a gift shop. What trip wouldn't be complete without an overpriced piece of junk that stays forever in a drawer after buying it? And I'm even tempted to buy a new hat. I'll leave which one it is up to your imaginations though. Days 20 to 24 are spent fully refurbishing the elevator and the second floor into hotel rooms. With popularity soaring and travellers from all over stopping, the hotel rooms would add a huge amount of caps into the local economy. Bedrooms come standard with a double bed and ensuite, as well as a small sitting area. With the rooms complete, the hotel and casino is finished and Rhodes celebrates with some of the new customers. And why don't we have a fly through of the casino? Starting with the check-in area which is spacious and well themed, one of the best restaurants in New Vegas, probably because it's one of about five in the entire area, the tackiest gift shop around to trap drunken patrons into spending everything they have, a spectacular casino and bar area filled with your favourite casino games, with a relaxing backdrop to encourage continued gambling, and a choice of slightly clean suites so you never have to leave the hotel. Day 25 and the casino is now earning 1,000 caps every day through all of its operations, and it's safe to say Rhodes doesn't handle having free time well. Spending his first cut failing miserably at the poker table, I guess the house always wins, even if you own it. I think it's about time we get another project underway. 
Day 26, and after an overnight stay in Nipton, restocking and catching up with the locals in the bar, it's time to head to New Vegas for another business opportunity. Mr. House had offered a management position at the Lucky 38, and after he hears a courier is out to kill him, he decides it's time to sell. So for a cut price, we're now the proud owners of a New Vegas casino, and with our recent experience, can transform the place. The first stop is to check what work needs to be done before opening. And well, let's just say, this won't be cheap or easy. Day 27, and it's time to get to work. First finding some Mr. Handy robots in storage, and repairing them over the course of the day, which will look after the checking counter and the money cage. And officially opening the casino with a 1500 cap payment, so the house has some funds to lose if we get unlucky. Day 28, and we need some working slot machines to be a casino, but there's electrical problems everywhere and they aren't working. So we get to fixing the outlet for the slot machines, and get them turned on to help with running costs. Checking running costs wasn't a great idea, because we're currently in the red, and it's not surprising by looking at the casino. It's dirty, there's nothing going on, and the clientele are a bit on the creepy side. Luckily, we have a lot of potential upgrades available based on the blueprints and items we have in storage, they'll just cost a lot to complete. Day 29 is spent fixing the lights around the casino and enabling them to be turned on to the brightest setting. If it never goes dark inside, then customers won't feel the need to go to sleep and spend more gambling. Day 30, and it's time to do a deep clean of the place, getting the mystery stains out of the carpets and giving every surface some disinfectant. Who knows what went on in here before we took over. And with no bartenders, it's a long night serving drinks to the few customers we have, especially this one who hasn't left in days. Day 31, and it's time to dig the blackjack tables out of storage to help the atmosphere. Again, not cheap as the repairs to the Protectron dealers cost a thousand caps each, but at least the news is getting out that the casino is a fun place to be with a nice jump in attendance. And for the first time, we're making money, with 763 caps coming in daily to reinvest. Day 32, and the day is spent repairing a bartender Mr. Handy, who requires no sleep, which is perfect for cost efficiency and stocking the bar with some drinks and snacks, which don't last long, so we'll need to get a regular supplier set up. Day 33 is spent repairing another Mr. Handy, so we can sell various completely legal chems. Luckily, the NCR don't care too much what goes on behind closed doors. But again, the stock is sold out very quickly. We also spend time repairing the jukeboxes around the casino to add some much needed atmosphere. Day 34, and needing a regular drink, food and dodgy goods supplier, we head back to Prim to check on the Bison Steve Casino. Talking to Steve to get another shipment contract set up that'll head to the New Vegas Strip, and collecting our share of the profit which is proving to be quite the cap printing method. Of course, it'd be silly of me not to try and double the money I've earned. Well, maybe it was silly, as the dealer never seemed to lose. D35, and after an early morning walk of shame back to New Vegas, we take a relaxed day setting up the new shipments of booze and chems with the Mr. Handy cashiers, programming in the daily stock and cap prices. D36, and continuing to expand, the roulette protectrons are repaired and wheeled out to complete the casino's game expansion plan. Now there's something for everyone. But the success also attracts some unsavoury characters who manage to dig into the current vault room from a mole rat tunnel underground. D37, and with the casino attracting some high-end customers, the VIP lounge is refurbished. With a private seating area overlooking the rest of the casino, and its own bar, it's a great place to entertain people willing to spend big. So of course, Rhodes spends the night sucking up to them in the hopes they'll drop enough caps to spend on the next few upgrades. Days 38 to 41 are spent fixing up another VIP area, the membership-only room of the Studio Club. A place where big spenders can relax with complimentary food and beverages, fully refurbished pool tables, and plenty of seating to relax in between casino visits, and it'd be rude not to have a private office in this area to make use of the quiet during a hard day's work. Day 42, and with daily profit reaching over a thousand caps, there's plenty of capital to reinvest, so a cleanup crew helps Rhodes to renovate the first floor of the casino, which holds a number of rooms for overnight visits. It's still a bit on the filthy side, and guests are conducting questionable experiments in the room, so this might need more work. Day 43, and with the guests' alcohol still nearly exploding, the guests are removed and Floor 1 is renovated further to appeal to more cap flush guests. With a robot brain to keep rooms clean, and fully furnished rooms in a variety of styles, this should keep guests coming back time and time again for long stays. And it's already proven popular with some of the guests using the Studio Club Lounge. 
Day 44, and the bathhouse is cleaned up and repaired. Turns into a calm and relaxed environment to wind down after a long day. Equipped with a sauna and steam room, and a huge luxury pool which needs more repairs due to low water pressure, it's still a great looking area to take a break though. Day 45, and with an ever increasing number of guests, food is becoming an issue, so the kitchen is refurbished. With a large serving area, plenty of room temperature and cold temperature storage, and plenty of cooking space capacity to future proof the casino with enough food for any guests. Day 46 and the employee quarters are repaired so we can hire after running out of robot workers. Featuring a very comfortable lounge area to rest before shifts, a kitchen and dining area to eat away from the chaos, and a number of private rooms which will come complimentary to anyone deciding to take a job. Day 47 and needing a more relaxed time, Rhodes decides to interview for a dancer to attract in customers. There's just one criteria to be eligible for the job, beat him in a dance-off, and that's definitely not an easy feat. Day 48 comes around and expansion is causing casino-wide power outages, so we head to the basement to investigate. After looking into the issue, the nuclear generator was operating in low power mode, and the day was spent unlocking the additional power through opening a number of switches to allow unlimited energy to be produced, sharing the excess with the local area and freeside due to how advanced the generator is. Day 49 and more casino service rooms are refurbished to increase the experience. With a dedicated reception area for service requests from guests, plenty of capacity to keep the bedding and rooms clean with washer dryers, and even a security office fitted with some jail cells for when a customer needs to sleep off some alcohol in the drunk tank. Day 50 and the caps generated the starting to snowball, so we need to beef up security. A security room is outfitted to allow guards to move in and start keeping the casino safe, along with computer stations which will be upgraded with CCTV. Days 51 to 53 are spent installing CCTV which allow guards to keep an eye out for anyone trying to plan another casino heist, all from the safety of the security office. A turret is also installed above the main entrance which can be activated remotely whenever an issue is identified on the main casino floor. And the door to the armory is also cracked open and with a bit of luck is fully stocked with pre-war assault weapons and shotguns. Day 54 and the medical clinic is opened and a top robotic doctor is activated. With plenty of space for sick and injured citizens, we decide to open the clinic up as a free service to citizens in New Vegas and Freeside. It might not pay well, but a good reputation and a healthy population will help the city prosper. Day 55 and with tourists flocking to the casino, the Sky Lounge is repaired to add even more excitement. Eventually it'll be a world class restaurant, but for now it's a great place to relax in style and take in the views from the top of the tallest building in New Vegas. Day 56 and another members only club is opened called Studio 12 to cater for the increasing number of high roller customers. With plenty of seating for a relaxed evening, a private bar stocked with high end cocktails, and plenty of entertainment around the lounge, it'll soon repay the caps it costs to refurbish. Day 57 and Rhodes notices profits are down due to increasing service and supply costs, so it's time to expand the hotel. Floor 2 is fully repaired in the same style as Floor 1, which increases capacity massively, featuring some bigger capacity guest suites to provide a cheaper room option. Days 58 to 60 are spent fixing the lack of shopping options in the casino, so we open up the Owl of Sanctus shopping floor after extensive repairs. A large open plan floor with a number of vendors providing upscale clothing will appeal to rich customers, and plenty of areas to take a break in between browsing the options also featuring a large room which will be aimed at events. Forget drive through weddings, get married here for exorbitant costs. Day 61 and even more entertainment has opened with a museum showcasing pre-war history, with exhibits focusing on pre-war technology and items, a section dedicated to the various cities and towns that have risen from the flames, and an exhibit showing off some questionable fashion that hasn't thankfully made a return in the Mojave. Day 62 and the engineers finally identify why the pool's water pressure is down, so we head out on a journey to the casino's water pumping station and Mr House's old mansion. After talking to the NCR and offering to help, we head into the substation identified in the casino records and proceed to clear out the Mylerk infestation. Eventually reaching the pumping station which is in need of some maintenance, and with a guide to repair it, get the pump back in full working order. After a long journey back to the casino, head into the water facility, and with plenty of water flowing into the building, fill the pool, 
and start distributing free water to Freeside to assist the humanitarian effort. Day 63, and an elevator is repaired which stops a huge intact floor which features a conference room fit for a board of directors, plenty of space to incorporate officers, and an eerie voice which calls out from a server room which turns out to be the casino's AI. The AI shares plans from Mr House to make the casino fully self-sufficient to decrease operating costs, and mentions a group of scientists who are in hiding who could assist in the transformation. With the scientists' last location marked on the map, Rhodes heads out on the road before stumbling across their town up in flames. The town was taken over by raiders and a gunfight breaks out. After a few close calls, the raiders are taken down and something in the distance catches my eye. A strange area full of greenery, something that stands out compared to the orange tint of the Mojave. Following the trail, we stumble across a bunker door and head inside to investigate. The bunker is strange and filled with technology Rhodes has never seen. Full to the brim of scientists and soldiers who point me in the direction of the leader. Commander Trimac gives a rundown on the group who identify themselves as the Enclave. And after getting rid of their old leader who was running a dictatorship, have been looking to redeem themselves. And what better way than inviting them to join the casino to push New Vegas into the future. Day 64 and after a day of setting up, we share plans with the Enclave on the setup of a botanical garden to grow food for self-sufficiency and they get right to work setting up the basement with high-tech farming machinery and sacrificing their own rations to get the garden started. With plenty of expansion room, we can provide food to all of the surrounding areas. Day 65, and the Enclave help fix a number of robots who can increase the kitchen's efficiency so we can provide cooked meals to Freeside and improve the service of the casino. And with an influx of people living at the casino, we can finally fully staff the Skyview restaurant turning it into a vibrant bar offering a number of fresh food and drink options. And on day 66, a floor is outfitted with high-tech banking facilities. The bank vault is protected by a number of turrets, a heavy-duty metal gate, and even a force field to keep the physical vault secure. The New Vegas Strip now has a fully secure area to keep the caps being invested into it, with the hope of more development grants being authorised. So, now there's nothing else to repair, and Rhodes can sit back and admire his work, repairing the town of Prim and breathing new life into a crumbling economy, taking over an abandoned casino and rebuilding it into the place to be on the Strip, with enough activities to keep any visitor to New Vegas occupied, and even reinvigorating local areas like Freeside with free water, healthcare and food.